very first thing is let's talk about automation. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines automation as the technique of making an apparatus, a process, or a system operate automatically. Many companies offer some form of automation. It's usually between a CMS database and a piece of medical device or a piece of medical test equipment. Um, sometimes this can be a one-way street where it's just pulling data from the medical device or from your analyzer to the CMS system. Some way it's, sometimes it's a two-way where it's pushing things back and forth. But we're not really talking about just automation. Today we're talking about workflow automation. So that harkens to the question, well, what exactly is workflow automation versus just automation? So the first thing is let's consider a standard fluke biomedical analyzer. In this case, we're using our VT series, and in this picture, the VT900A gas flow analyzer. Well, the truth about the VT900A gas flow analyzer, it's not one device. It's actually approximately 13 single-use devices all inside of this box, right down to the ability to view 16 breathing parameters at one time. But it's not just the VT900A. It's also our impulse series, defib analyzers. And in the case of the, of the Impulse 7000, it's actually three analyzers in this box and all of its tests. But it's more than that because it's also our electrical safety analyzers and all of the tests that come with it. Not to mention, not just the tests, but the different standards. So if you are working in your hospital and you're, you know, you're in the house hospital biomed and you're following your PM procedures, you're following NFPA 99, and it has the load for that. And with our ESAs, maybe you're now going to do a factory upgrade, and you notice it calls out the 62353 standard. Do you have the appropriate loads for that? This is all going to pull all these things into it for us, as well as our most recent launch, the Fluke Biomedical ProSumate Multi-Parameter Simulator. Right now, we're able to simulate five five different parameters simultaneous, your NIBP, your SpO2, ECG, respirations, and temperatures. So now you have a unified approach to looking at a patient on the screen. Everything synchronized, as well as the built-in pressure manometer, NIBP testing, pressure sources, leak tests, all that. All those things are at your fingertips. But it's more, because one QA is so powerful that we can actually step outside of the biomed field and move into the imaging field and drive our RaySafe X2 system along with all the tests with the RF system right now. And please hear me that this is continuing to be built out and soon you will see more and more devices added to the screen. But anything that's interoperable, you might wanna start collecting some data, like the model, serial number, and calibration record of the devices connected. One QA can gather that information. So say in six months you have an audit and they want to know every device that your X2 was used on. Simple enough, jump in one QA, pull it up, it'll show you each and every device that X2 was used on. Or maybe you had a failure where your meter got knocked out of calibration. Well, now you need to go back for three or four months and see, make sure all those procedures were, were done correctly and that they had the right results. Now you can go back in and pull all that and find each and every one that I was tied to. If you get into the OEM field, we record this a lot on our, on our work orders. This is going to do it for you automatically. But it's more than just this thing about the interoperable devices. How about the non-interoperable devices? How about the old legacy devices? Or maybe you have a BC group analyzer. Not a big deal. We can simply build a test procedure that will give you a yes, no answer or have a data input entry. Maybe it's a numerical entry and you can put a tolerance in it. So if you Answer has to be five and you have a tolerance of 0.5. You type in 5.3. If it's passing in that tolerance, it moves it on. You still get so much of this, even with those non interoperable devices. But it's also things as simplistic as a ruler. You can use a ruler and still get the benefits of one QA. So this is all about the devices interoperable ones, non interoperable ones. But there's more to workflow automation than just this because you also need a procedure. So where do you get a standardized procedure? Well, a lot of times this data is going to come from an OEM service manual. Now you'll have a procedure, a diagram, some pictures, some data and passwords. All these things can easily be cut and pasted right into one QA 
and you can build procedures right out of that OEM manual, right down to taking the graphics out so you can follow exactly through all those tips and tricks that they're giving you. But it's not just those things because we all know after we've worked on something two or three times, we find our own things we want to record. Maybe you want to take a picture that you have to take out these four screws to get to the filter, or here's the access code, or, oh man, you need the, this adapter and connect it this way. All those things we, we, we fret over. You know, I used to get so nervous every time I had to go to transvenous pacemakers. I had like six of them. I only serviced them once a year, and I would spend the first two and a half hours trying to remember how I did it last year. You know how nice it is if I just had a picture to look at and go, oh, yeah, I hooked it up just like that, and here's my steps, and click, click, click. Oh, I'm done. Or this one. We've all gone to OEM schools. You know, sometimes it's up to $10,000 or more for a week. Hey, let's face it. We're a hot commodity right now. There's five biomed jobs for every four technicians. You get a trained technician, somebody wants to take them. But you can bring that knowledge base into one QA so that the other guys or your other technicians can follow right along. So we talked about these procedures and what's been to the procedures. But we're here, and a lot of places, even in the United States, can follow alternative procedures. So you can take that OEM procedure, and maybe you need that for the incoming inspection, right? So you can have an incoming inspection procedure, and then you can extrapolate the things you need out of it to form an alternative maintenance procedure. And then maybe if you find the device broken, you need a repair procedure. One QA has all of these capabilities where you can build multiple procedures by device and easily lock them out. So you build them, you can put them in the way that you need them and lock them down so they can't be changed. And you know that everything is being done the same way every time. This is amazing, especially in the larger networks, larger facilities where there might be multiple versions of PM procedures sitting around. I had a friend tell me the story the other day. There was a change in the DFIM manual. Half the team was doing it one way, another half the team was doing it another way because somebody found a procedure laying underneath the desk in an old binder. So there's two different versions in the same shop. Here, if you update it one time, it automatically changes it to the entire network. But there's more to workflow automation than just procedures. We also have an optional asset inventory. So you can collect the make model serial number, very similar to what the CMMS system is doing, but in here you can do things like embed pictures. So you're looking for the x-ray machine that looks like a giraffe, not the one that looks like a fire truck. And you can take a picture of that and insert it. Or maybe you could take a picture of the Zoll R series defibrillator, so the new guy goes out and he's grabbing that one, not the Zoll X series. You can also do things like add notes in there, like the code for the door where it's at is 1 2 3 4. Go in, third ceiling tile to the left of the IV pumps, or where you're going to find it. Because I don't know why people hide things in the ceiling, but as a biomed, we all know it happens. All those notes can be collected by that specific make model serial. You can even record like the software versions in there. Maybe you want to put the special tools you're going to need, or make sure you let the OR staff know before you show up so they can have it freed up. All that goes into this workflow automation. So all these things, when we're done with the procedure then, we need to generate some reports. So this can be a function of the CMMS system, or this can be a standalone. The nice thing about this is to say, maybe you get a call in, there's a new piece of equipment coming into the OR, you got to go and you test it real quick, and they want to print out for their records. Easy, do it right through one QA print it out. Or maybe you're using an Excel spreadsheet for your CMMS system. No problem at all. Complete your work order, print a PDF, attach it. You need to email it to somebody, PDF it. You want a concise report, you want a detailed report, whatever those reports you're looking for, it's really not a big deal. One QA can build those reports, put your header on it, and get the pertinent information you need to your customers, and maybe hide those things like those pictures. They don't need to see all that, so let's just leave those on the background. OneQA also has an open API. So what does that mean? We're talking about can OneQA communicate with your CMS platform? The beautiful thing about the open API is we use a common JSON language. So there's really we can really work with any of the CMS uh, providers out there and build this interface. And the beautiful thing about it is, is we can really build the interface how you want it to happen. Maybe you want to drive the work order from 
uh, your CMMS. Maybe you want to pull the work order out so you can have all the pictures you want to drive it to one QA. All those things are possible with an open API. Another thing about one QA is that everything we do is backed up to the cloud. One QA is a cloud based program. So anything that it captures, anything that you're doing is also going to be backed up to that cloud. Anytime that you attend any biomed conference, HTMI conference, clinical engineering conference, what's being talked about? Data security. We talk about data security all day, every day. Here's the beautiful thing. If your CMS system goes down, you have a backup. If your data gets breached, you have a backup. Everything that you're doing can be captured in a separate location. So that now if one goes down, you always have this one QA as a backup. You can easily retrieve it. Whew. There's sure a lot of things here. Let's just take a break. Red light. Hmm. Why do we have a stoplight? As children, we all played red light, green light. One QA is built much the same way. Anytime you complete a step of your procedure and it passes, you get a green light. Green is go. Move on to the next step. If you have a failure, you have an issue, something's out of tolerance, you get a big red circle with a white X in it. Stop. Failure. Issue. You can either then annotate the issue and open up a repair work order, or maybe you want to go ahead and facilitate the repair right now and retest that parameter, in which case you get to green light and you move on. So green is go, red is stop. So that leaves the old yellow light, but well, actually we just used white. White means not complete. We talked about interruptions. There was nothing more frustrating for me. I wasn't stationed in one hospital. I used to travel around the United States servicing medical equipment. Nothing was worse than driving six and a half hours to a facility, doing a PM, and you're a moving target. Everybody has a question for the biomed when you're out on the floor, right? You get interrupted. You didn't realize that you missed a step. You went ahead and tore down everything, closed up your work order, packed up your toolbox, drove six and a half hours back home. You synchronized all your data. You went, <laughs> oh, step 14. I definitely didn't do step 14. Now I have to go explain to my boss that I have to just take another day and drive the whole way back six and a half hours, explain to the medical staff, you know what, maybe it's not six and a half hours, but I haven't found a biomed shop that's right beside a Noar. We're usually about two and a half miles away down in the basement beside the morgue. That's a long way to walk to figure out that you missed a step. This is a beautiful thing about 1QA, red light, green light. If you have all the green lights at the bottom of the procedure, you get a green light. If there's one red X, you get a stop. So at the end of the day, you can go through all your procedures. Anything that has a green light, don't need to worry about. You only need to focus on those red X's that have an issue or the clear ones that weren't completed. So taking all this together, you realize that there's a lot that goes into workflow automation versus just a single line between a CMS platform and a single device. So when you put all this together in a nice, neat package, this is what we are calling Fluke by Medical's 1QA.